Yay. Okay. So, this is what a normal, typical set of dice, unscrewed with, unbastardized, would look like as far as the distribution goes. There are six ways to get a seven, which is the average. It's perfectly symmetrical. Not bell-shaped, but perfectly symmetrical. It actually makes a 90-degree angle at the top. None of you had this. None of you had this. This was that. This none of the dice that are in front of you looked exactly like that. Those of you that had the blue dice, does this agree with what you guys had? Blue dice. Two of you had blue dice, right? Two of you. So here's the distribution on the blue dice. So compare your numbers to mine. See if they see if they match up with what you got. And this is really the key right here. The, we want to know the average. The average of this is about 8.2. Well, the plus or minus is about 2.65. Those are the blue dice, the blue dice and their numbers. Elena brings up a very good point, like, what the hell? I'm missing one. I'm missing one. You're right, I got 35, I can't get 36, or I got 40, I should have 36. And what I want you to think about, too, is we're calling this mu and we're calling this little sigma. We, we are calling it those. But the problem is, the only way to call that mu and little sigma is to go get the entire population. Now, I know you're, we're talking about something silly, which is little dice that I made in my, in my garage. But in general, you want to know these things. You want to know the average age of your voter or the average length of time that car, that car battery is going to last. Like, for example, a hybrid car. The average length of time that that car battery is going to last. Because somebody wants to buy a, buy a hybrid, and you're going to tell them, well, you know what? Every two years, you've got to buy another $16,000 battery. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, OK. I'm going to keep putting gas in this Cherokee then. So you want to know what those averages are. I'm making that up, Jay. Okay. I, I know I need to actually every two years or $16,000, but I know they're expensive and they do die. They do die, which is the first thing I thought of when I started this camera started farting out. I'm like, aren't the batteries going much less than $16,000? Yeah. So anyway, you want to know these values, but this is a very inefficient way of getting them. So there's your blue distribution. How many of you had the yellow? There's a yellow dice. Look, look like what you got, Jay, right there. Yeah, you got a very low average. Because those dice were heavy on the, on the low numbers. So there's many, many ways to get a 3, a 4, and a 2, and not so many ways. There's your blanks, your 10 and your 12. You, you couldn't get 10 and 12. You get a little 11 right there. And I love this. I call this the skewed right because it's leaning way to the left right there. Okay. Here's green. My green friends had the green dice. This is the giving the bird distribution. Yes, yeah, I like this one. Lots of 7s, perfect average on 7. It's symmetric. It's symmet I was trying to make a distribution of the dice that looked like this. And then I realized I couldn't. Then I realized I couldn't. Why? I was trying really hard to make a distribution that was shaped like a big U. Why couldn't I do that? But why couldn't I make it a U? It seems like I could make a lot of different shapes, but I couldn't make a U. How come? Why do you think? What do you think, Jenny? Say that again? That's the problem. In order to get lots of twos and threes, I've got to have lots of like ones and twos. And in order to get lots of 11s and 12s, I have to have lots of 5s and 6s. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have 1s and 6s, yeah. you automatically have to get 7s, right? Does that make sense? you got a 1 on 1 on a 6, and eventually a 1 and a 6 is going to come together to make a 7, or a 5 and a 2. So, I mean, there's, there's no way around the spike in the middle of when you're, what I was trying to do, what I was trying to do. So I finally gave up and just dealt with this. All right? Here's orange. This is one of my favorites. It's just such a ridiculous looking distribution. So many gaps. You've got you know, a mode here, a mode here, with these gaps everywhere else, yes. Your average is seven, but this is when you have to ask yourself, how useful is an average anyway? I mean, there's your average, right? It's not happening around the average. Really wide standard deviation around 2.15, there you go. And last but not least, yep. this one actually looked like a belt, ish, ish. But because the numbers were larger, it got shifted to the right. It got shifted to the right. So that was the problem with that one. So now the question is, the question is, we often want to have that value, and perhaps that value too. But the way we just got it was a tad bit fictitious. I gave you a pair of dice, and I said, here, go count every possible outcome on those dice. Now, granted, it was only 36, so no, no skin off of our noses. But imagine if it was five different dice. Now you've got six to the fifth power, which would be more annoying to count. Still countable, but more annoying to count. But then we start thinking more realistically. Suppose we're interested in the average attention span increase of an ADHD kid on Adderall versus an ADHD kid on Ritalin. And more purposes, maybe we're interested in the average uh, attention span increase on different dosages of Adderall and Ritalin. Well, how are you going to count that? Are you going to go and measure every single kid's attention span that's on Adderall and Ritalin or in a control group? You can't, right? So what do you do to get the idea? What do you take? 
you take a sample from the population. That's what we'll start with on Monday. Right now, I don't want to start it now because we can't do it in 14 minutes. You're going to take the same dice, make a note of what color dice you have right now. I need them for my next class. So I'm going to give that color dice back to you guys on Monday. And what you're going to do is you guys are going to come up with this idea right here without having to count the entire population. You're going to get those values through sampling. And something magical called the central limit is not magical. It's actually very, very cool. It seems like magical called the central limit here. We'll do that on Monday, though. Okay? So for Monday, to prep for that,